Hello again everyone. So I don't really have too many modern muscle cars. I, this is only my second Ford Mustang. So it's time to get into this, right? Uh, I've been eyeing the uh, Ford Mustangs that Greenlight have put out. There's a yellow one. I think it's like a GT350 or something. And it looks all right, but the panel gaps just bothered me. So I, I held off on it. And then I found this thing at a, a local store here. It's a Global 64 from Tarmac Works. So Tarmac Global, and it's some sort of special edition from the 2016 SEMA show. That's the Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association. Uh, so it's basically a, a show in Las Vegas, and it's all about uh, the aftermarket for the auto industry and pretty much any other motorized vehicle. You have to be part of the industry to go, but I think if you have friends at like a car dealership or parts store, you'll probably be able to get some tickets because there's a lot of people going to that thing. Okay, so uh, since this is only my second Mustang, I did a bunch of research. Hopefully it's correct. I apologize if any of it's wrong, but that's why there's a comment section, right? Um, this is supposed to be the sixth generation Mustang, which was came out in 2015, and it's still sold today. I guess it's still a running, running uh, generation. Uh, let's see here. So this is in particular called the GT4, which is a, a stripped out racing car, really. It uh, was the replacement for the Shelby GT350R-C, which I know absolutely nothing about because uh, this is only my second Mustang. <laughs> and uh, this GT4, I guess, was selling for $200,000, which I guess is relatively inexpensive to go racing. It would race in GT4 classes of several different uh, racing organizations. And it's supposed to be powered by a 5.2 liter V8, making 450 horsepower due to racing regulations. That's the horsepower they want. And uh, it's running on 18 inch forged wheels made by a brand called Forgeline. I've never heard of that brand either. I don't really keep up with the aftermarket of cars these days. Okay, so that's what I learned about this thing, and uh, let's take a look. So for some reason I seem to be on a gray kick. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm now realizing this might be the second or third gray model I have in my collection, this glossy gray. Uh, I really wish someone would make a matte finish gray so it looks more military style. But I guess this is pretty cool to look at anyways. Uh, this looks like Tampo printing. I don't know. Are these decals or Tampos? You see, there's this wrinkliness here, but it's super smooth here. So I think this is actually all a decal. This entire thing, this 17, even this clear here is all part of the decal. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. It's nice right now, but uh, I'm just thinking about long down the future in 10 20 years, these decals were, are going to dry up and crack off, possibly. Or if you actually just touch it, the moisture from your fingers will lift them up. So be mindful of that with any of your old models if they have decals. See right here, there's an air gap underneath that blue. So if you touch it, it might break. There's possibly an air gap in the door panel cut here as well. Okay, well, that's too bad. But for the foreseeable immediate future. It's a pretty cool looking model. Okay, let's look at these wheels here. They're nice. So I mentioned the forge lines, 18 inch, and then you got the tires look nice. Continental, and they're not slab sided. There's some curvature to them, even though they're low profiles. There's no brake system at all though, but uh, this is a, a Tarmac Global, so it's. It, I don't think the Globals have any brake systems because they're less expensive than the Crystal Box ones. The, the ones that are called Tarmac Hobby. This door handle sticking out. It's just, uh, there's no like, there's a little depression on the bottom side, but there's also supposed to be a, a depression on the top side so your fingers can go through. I think that could have been cast a little better. Hmm. It seems to be a rubbery mirror. It's not hard, it's not a rigid plastic. It's not as soft as a Mini GT. But uh, there's a little bit of give, so it's possible if you drop this, it might survive. No guarantees, though. And this is new to me. 
Every tarmac, I don't have many tarmacs, but uh, I'm pretty sure all the other ones I have have painted when uh, painted mirrors. But this is literally a reflective sticker, so that's much better than silver paint. It's literally reflecting, so that's nice, very nice, especially for a a, a tarmac global. So this is, I think, my only second uh, globals. So maybe. Globals come with stickers and the hobbies come with painted mirrors. I'm not sure Okay, there's some blackout here on the windows and a couple rivets there because you know as a race car This would probably have plexiglass windows Okay, yeah, same on the, the front windscreen here plastic windshield some uh, raised up uh, wiper blades and then we got these casted in vents here Hmm. It's questionable if they should have added some black paint. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are real vents on the real car, so it would make sense to have a little black in the these depressions. But uh well again, so this is a uh, if it was a tarmac hobby, maybe it would have that paint. But being a global, uh I gotta keep remembering the, the budget's a lot less. Okay, well we got some black uh hood releases there, and then this forward thing looks pretty well done. Now, is this a decal though? I don't know. This, this is definitely a decal. It's wrinkly. Yeah, I guess that's probably a decal. Alright, so we got the grill here. And it's uh, textured, of course. It's just painted black, so that's all part of the casting. Uh, I don't know what this is. I have to assume that's probably a badge of some sort. Maybe this casting they're using. I'm pretty sure they have like a civilian version with an actual, you know, all the seats in there. And so maybe that has the badge printed or something. Plastic uh, headlights are looking good because it looks like there's something reflecting behind it. Some sort of silver paint or maybe a chrome chrome plastic back there. And then the turn signals uh, got some orange separation, so that's nice. These little running lights here, or maybe they're LEDs or something. A little white paint there, so that looks good. A little black paint app here blending into this chin spoiler so that's pretty nicely done all right yeah, I didn't really look at those sponsors down there it seems like they're pretty legible although this Brembo one is uh, gone the R is missing okay fuel filler is on this side uh, the gray paint does seem to be pretty thick like this isn't so bad but like the door is almost vanishing here it's really filling in the panel gaps all right, a little red painted uh, reflector there. Didn't see that on the other side. And then the black is carrying through down here on the side skirt here. And then it's wrapping up around the back. And then in the back we got some, uh, there's a black, well, no, I guess that's just one flat, flat piece of plastic, but they printed on, you know, the silver and black. Uh, that's pretty good. I mean, it looks three-dimensional, but it's technically not three-dimensional. So that's pretty cool. All right, a little uh, orange uh, to a little red for a reflector. I assume that's a reflector. Some of uh, our sponsorship stuff. And then we got the, the little pony, running pony there, running Mustang. And I can't focus on it. There we go. So that seems good enough. And then these taillights, I think, are pretty nice. You know, the thick, uh, translucent red and uh they're molded nicely cool uh the wing is pretty good too you know it's not a super wide plastic it seems pretty good and there's no like sinkholes a lot of times you'll see a sinkhole here as the cooling of the plastic it causes that but uh either they let this plastic cool down properly or whoever designed the mold knew what they were doing so okay uh, some blackout here on the back windscreen, and now we're starting to get a look at this race interior. So there's a white roll cage, and that's pretty cool. There's a fuel line. I assume that's a fuel tank or not. I don't know what that is. It's a red line suspended, but where is it going? I'll have to get the flashlight in a second here. But what else is down in there? These little black boxes? Are these telemetry boxes or something? Or Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. Okay. 
steering wheel is on that side, so let's hold it here. Let me get a flashlight. It's such a shallow side window. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see much here. Oh, well, you know what? We can. So molded in uh, details on the dashboard. Steering wheel looks all right. It's a general and it's definitely a racing seat. It's not a regular road going seat. So it's a different mold the, they had to make there. And then, yeah, no passenger seat, of course, being a race car. Mm, what is that red stuff? All right, it's, I'm sure those must be like the fire extinguishing system there. All right, uh, hmm, there's still some door detail there. There's like a door handle there. Uh, now that red tube we saw earlier is just going up into the roof. Why? If anyone knows, please leave a comment. I, I don't know why you would have a red tube or red cable just going up into the roof when there's nothing on the roof. At first I was thinking uh, there might be like a port for a fuel filler, quick racing fuel filler, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Look at the real photos now. Unfortunately, I don't see this side in the photograph, so I don't know. It's a mystery. So I've seen. I tend to run into a lot of questions looking at these models because I, I really don't know much about the real cars. So okay. All right. So yeah, screwed together base. So that's great if you want to do like a wheel swap or mess with the interior, or fix something. It's running racing slick, so that that seems pretty accurate. And uh, it's nice to know that it's what the car is. It would have been nice to print 2016 SEMA here, right? So people know this isn't a regular road going car. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna literally go through the problem process of printing on this metal, it's not cast into the metal, right? It's a separate app. So like, it, I just think it would have been nicer to have more text there. And also like the year of manufacture or year of copyright you know, was it 2015 or was it actually after the show, 2016, 2017, you know, just sort of posterity so we know how old, how good models are when they're 10, 20 years old. Okay. Well, anyways, I, I'm quite happy I have this thing. I don't think I saw any actual paint flaws or paint rash or scratches or gouges, which kind of makes sense, at least on the paint rash part, because it can't be that old of a model maybe five years that's a super nitpick there you know so maybe oh no it's just grime it's not even a paint contaminant so all right or no maybe it is all right so maybe it's a 99 percent perfect model pretty good in my book okay let's get the uh solar spinner out here It's a pretty mean looking car. I like it. It's uh, the last time I cared about a Mustang was back when I was in high school, like when the Mustang 5.0s with like 1986, that kind of 1990, late 80s, early 90s. I don't know what the body code would be on that, so I apologize. But anyways, let's compare it to the one other Mustang I have, and it is a green light. It is a 1965 Shelby GT350. So, if this is the replacement for the GT350R-C, I suppose there is some sort of family lineage going on here. There's just a car missing from this uh, from this uh, setup here, but uh, okay. So I think uh, you know even Greenlight did a decent job. I wish it didn't have an opening panel. I wish it had transparent uh, headlights. But other than that, I mean it's got great wheels. The profile looks pretty nice. So it's pretty good, but all right, this show is about this car here. Uh, what I'm wondering now is if I'm going to try to get a regular road going uh, Ford Mustang of the latest generation. I would assume it's going to have a normal interior and not this really uh, large wing. So, and it would probably have different wheels. I'm going to have to probably look into this from a uh, tarmac to see what other. Mustangs they've put out. 
because I really like it. I like that there's no opening hood. It just looks consistent. Okay. All right, well guys, uh, I know there's gotta be a plenty of Mustang fans, so this one was for you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll get some more Mustangs in the future. Okay, thanks for tuning in.